Hi there, in this quick video we're going to do a very quick overview of five important MIDI editors that every door should have. Now you can access editors in Cubase by double clicking on an event in the project window. When I click on this MIDI event, I get the first editor, which is the key editor. This is the best editor for working with musical notes. We can do things like enter notes, change how loud the notes are sounding when the door plays them back to us. We can change their position. And of course, we can do things like add extra notes for extra texture. It's important to be able to access all the MIDI information in an editor. And in Cubase editors, you can use these handles here to zoom in and out. You can also enter a full screen mode here. The key editor has a piano scroll down here, and all of these blocks out in the main area represent notes in the piano scroll. Down the bottom, we can get access to control information, and we can control that using those lines. If I right mouse click on this area here, I can choose the setup window. Now this allows me to define what I can see and what I wish to hide in that top strip area there. And for example, I can move things around between the left, center, and right hand side of that window. I can save presets and you can also return to factory settings by selecting reset all. Now along the left hand side, I've got these drop down tabs, which have even more functionality and parameters to help me with the key editor window. For example, at the moment I've got a string part and I've selected all my notes. And now I'm using this parameter right here to change the note length to make the part sound smoother. So if you don't have a sustain pedal or you're not so good at holding notes on a keyboard, very quickly you can just go to that one parameter and make the part sound like a string player is actually bowing the notes into the next note. So it's small things like that that can make a really huge difference and make our part sound a lot more realistic. This is the same part, but you can probably hear that it's played differently, meaning there's different types of performance. So if I go to articulations and dynamics here, you can see three different styles of playing, legato, tremolo, and staccato. Now these are basically articulations and they match up with the articulations inside of Hellion Sonic SE. All I need to do is get my pencil and draw in a change in the controller lane. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube to show you how you can achieve this. The other thing I can do to get a really quite realistic sound is double click on one of these notes. When I double click on one, a new window appears. And right here you can see that I can draw in volume changes using my pencil. At the moment, snap to grids on. So take that off and now you can freely draw information into this window. There are a number of different parameters I can change depending on the preset that I have selected inside of Hellion Sonic SE. And you can create your own. So everything from resonance to cutoff to pan to volume to even tuning. Just watch what happens when I go to the chord drop down menu and select an arrow next to one of these chords. When I press down on my mouse inside the key editor, I'm now creating complex chords in a matter of seconds. And I can also draw the notes out by holding down on my mouse. So now we're entering chords that we would potentially never have been able to enter. And to top it all off, I can just get my pencil and now enter individual articulations on each of these individual notes. If you're into notation, then open up the score editor, select an instrument style or instrument type, and then use this slider here and move it to the left and to the right until your score looks clean and neat. And very quickly, you've created a lead sheet that you can then share with fellow collaborators who might read music. Cubase has an advanced score editor, which is actually really easy to use. And if you're into scoring and notation, perhaps editing in the score editor is something you might find easier than working in the key editor. We're still working with notes. We're just working in a different manner. So the option is there to use scoring and use notation to enter and edit notes in Cubase. Back in the project window, I can go down to this editor tab and select the drop down menu to get access to the key, drum, and score editor. This time I'm going to select the drum editor and now everything's changed again. I've still got a grid, but now I've got drum instruments instead of a piano scroll and I can use this drumstick to enter diamonds. Except this diamond that I'm entering at the moment is Nakao Bell. So these names on the left hand side are generic MIDI names. So if I click here and select create drum map from instrument, now 
I get the correct drum names on the left hand side. And I can start to correctly or accurately enter information with my drumstick inside the drum editor. And notice that the drum editor doesn't have any note length. So I can just pick up on it and drag to the right to enter a number of different hits straight after each other, dependent on what grid setting or quantize setting I've got. So I can even make these notes faster if I want to. And down the bottom, I can still control the velocity in my controller lane. So a lot of these editors are very similar in terms of how they're used. You can quickly scale the controller lanes to have greater visibility and control. Another super cool thing is the ability to open the in place editor. And that's this button right here. So if we click on edit in place on each of these parts, you can see that we get this editor up in the project window instead of the event that we had there before. And this might be super handy if you go up and turn off all of the different zones. So now you can see that we can see the notes, we can see our controller lanes, we can see things like volume sweeps, and of course we can zoom in and out to make sure that everything's sitting perfectly on the project window. But this is a completely different way of using an editor inside of Cubase. Finally, we're going up to the MIDI menu and you can see that you can access all of those editors through this menu. I'm going to open the list editor. Now the list editor again gives us a grid. It gives us the controller lane on the right hand side with all of the different velocities. But on the left hand side, it shows us every piece of information that's stored within the MIDI event that we've double clicked on. So things like main volume changes or sustain pedal changes. And this is really important if you're using something like a MIDI controller and you're using different controls on your MIDI controller. You'll be able to access and edit all of that information right here. A very brief overview of what happens when something is activated or transferred through MIDI. We get a type of message like a controller or a note message. Then we can see when that has started we can see when it's ended, we can see the length of it, or we can see which note's been played, or the value of the control message that's been sent. Don't forget that everything in Cubase is configurable. We can change the way we access functionality and parameters. We can also introduce and remove zones. And whenever you see a wagon wheel, it means you go to get a setup window so you can further customize the editor that you're working with to best suit your workflow. Here's another one here. There's plenty more involved videos on the editors in the Cubase YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to that. Like this video if you've learned something and leave us comments below telling us how you're using the editors in Cubase. Catch you soon.